I hiked Bede Mountain on an early September morning. This is actually the second time I attempted to hike the mountain. The first time it was an overcast day, and as I was walking towards the mountain, I heard a clap of thunder. So not wanting to get zapped, I decided to come back on a better day. And learn from my mistakes. Do not follow this cattle trail. It does not lead to the summit. Bede Mountain is not real well marked. In fact, it's hard to even find a sign with the name on it. Getting to Bede Mountain is easy. Just go south of Gearing on Highway 71 to County Road W, and then go east for 2.8 miles to the parking area. Or, you can go east of Gearing on Highway 92 to County Road 24, go turn south to County Road W, and then go west for half a mile on County Road W to the parking area. Well, today I'm hiking to the top of Bede Mountain. Right over there, part of the Platte River Basin environments. I grew up there and see what it looks like. I've never been to the top of it. I've seen it a lot of times, but we'll see what it looks like. One thing to watch for, and there's several of these on the route, are these kind of water drainage points. And along here, you'll have to go through those. They're not difficult, but just keep your eyes open, as always, for snakes. That might be happening to be down in these. The earthen dam you can see from this side, this is what it looks like. It's part of a flood control project. Obviously, we're in a drought situation right now, so there's not much water to control, as it is completely empty. I try to avoid the tallest of these grasses here, um, just in case there happens to be some slithery friends hiding in there that I don't really care to meet. We are getting closer. Bead Mountain is gonna be ours pretty soon. I'm gonna go for this route here, right between, right, right, right there where the saddle is. We'll go up there and then we can go to both of the summits of Bead Mountain. We got kind of the south summit and the north summit. Another reason to watch your step here is so you don't step on a prickly pear. Okay, we've come a long ways. Parking area is right about there. And we're up into the trees now. Getting ready to take the last little bit. I'm going to go on a limb here and say this last little bit is probably going to be the most strenuous part of the hike. Otherwise, it's been pretty easy. But fortunately, it doesn't look like it's going to last very long. We'll check back in here and we get to the top. Even though it was early September, the leaves were starting to change for fall. Found a bit of a, bit of a game trail, it looks like. Up here in the trees, so we're going to follow that and see where it leads us. We're almost to the top. The Bead Mountain property covers 3,100 acres. But it's part of several other properties that give a continuous 10,000 acres of wildlife management area. Well, I've reached the top of the saddle. Beautiful views of the North Platte River Valley from up here. With the smoke in the air, it's so pretty. We're going to go. Um, next place we're headed to right up there, the lower of the two summits. The Beat Mountain. Kind of the south summit. We're going to that one. Sure, in the saddle area. Just gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. And yes, my friend, this is in Nebraska. My one wildlife encounter occurred right here. I was just admiring this little cleft as a good spot to take shelter in a storm, and then I startled a snake and it retreated into this little cleft. So if you did take shelter in a storm here, you'd likely have company with you. Okay, here I am to the top of the south summit. Beautiful view. The lower summit, as you can tell. That's the next turret. South summit. Wow, what a sight. Thank <laughs> you. 
according to my altimeter, I'm at 4,586 feet. I can refer to the south zone, but actually the west zone. Saddle area. We're gonna start making our way up to the uh, eastern summit, I guess. More so than northern. So we're heading up this way. This is a higher summit. According to the map, it's 4,610 feet. We'll see what my altimeter says on that. So it's a little bit higher up. About damn yeah, 25 foot or so. So we'll take a look. It's also gonna be a little bit less of a distinct route to take. Speed Mountain is named after a Native American burial ground found nearby. The difference in altitude from the top of the north summit to the parking lot is 410 feet. So there is a western summit, or a southern summit. So you can tell we're obviously higher than that. We're about 4,610 feet up here. Beautiful view of the Gearing Valley, North Platte River Valley. And then getting over here, getting here looking at the Buffalo Creek wildlife area off to the southeast. Okay, this is sad. If you look here, right up here on top, somebody hauled glass bottles of some sort up here. I'm gonna guess probably beer bottles and broke them up here and left them up here. Folks, we gotta take care of these wilderness areas and these scenic areas like this. We're gonna be able to keep them. Well, according to my altimeter, we're at 4,617 feet right here. We've got panoramic views all around us. Wildcat Hills, Scottsbluff National Monument, Silver Buffalo Creek Wildlife Area. The city of Scottsbluff and Gearing, sugar factories. Everything is gorgeous. We're gonna head down now. I think I'm gonna take a slightly different route down. I'm not gonna go back to the saddle. There's a, a ridge line that goes down. That might be a good choice for a straight shot down. Perhaps a little bit faster route. Enjoy the view with me. Here at the top of Bead Mountain in Scottsbluff County, Nebraska. You know, just thinking about it, the top of this place would actually be a fairly flat up here. It would actually be a nice spot to camp out for the night. We, however, it would be a bad spot to be in a lightning storm, so you want to make sure you had good weather for that evening. So that might perhaps be uh, a future adventure. Camp out, spend the night on top of Bead Mountain. Something I'll have to think about. I'm of the opinion that sometimes going down is just as hard as coming back up. I decided to take this little ridge line down here instead of going back the way I came. It's more of a direct shot. Up, it's also pretty steep, so I've increased the length of my trekking poles by five centimeters to help me out. So let's see how this works. Bead Mountain is the 15th highest peak in Nebraska. Well, I managed to make it down my my alternate route. Um, did have a slip and fall where I. Bent my trekking pole. There we go. Bead Mountain. Bead Mountain defeated the trekking pole. This thing has been through me with 
and Alaska and Rocky Mountain National Park and little Bee Mountain in Nebraska. Took it out, so it's like it's time to buy some new trekking poles. <laughs> Hydrate or die, fellas. Hydrate or die. Big shout out to Hydro Pack. I really like this system they have. I'll show you a little bit more about it later when I'm back home. But it's really a nice um, water bladder. It does a really good job. It's a three liter water bladder, so I got plenty of water out here, which is good because there's absolutely no water source out here whatsoever. I'll show you that when we get home. If you have watched my video where I'm hiking Flat Top Mountain in Alaska, you saw how my camera was flopping around when I was hiking. I solved that problem now by buying a Peak Design camera clip. You can attach the clip onto your backpack or onto a belt or any solid flat object and then use a standard tripod plate underneath the camera and it slides into the clip and clicks in. Then you push the button and pull it back out when you're ready to use it. This works really well for keeping the camera from flopping around all over the place as you can see in this video. By the way, these are not paid promotions. I bought the Hydro Pack water butter earlier this year. This is the second time I've used it on a serious hike, and it works really well. It is thicker and more flexible than the discount store bladders. I like the fact that the whole top of it opens. You can put ice in there if you want to, and you can turn it inside out to clean it and let it dry when you're done with it. It seals really well and hasn't leaked. It is a nice system. That's it for Bead Mountain. I hope you enjoyed taking this hike with me in what I consider to be the most scenic part of Nebraska. Just a reminder, if you decide to visit Bead Mountain, you need a Nebraska State Park Pass on your vehicle to be able to enter the parking lot. As always, please like and subscribe, consider supporting me on Patreon under the name Philip Eckerberg, and we will see you on the next Acre Hill Adventure.